Hello, everybody. I'm Gary Lobbach behind the mic along with Mike Joseph. A little bit different setting this week as we are at the Kirby Sports Center getting ready for basketball season as the seasons begin to overlap. But our focus is obviously Lafayette Lehigh for the 152nd time. The teams come in with not identical records. Lehigh comes in 8-2, and two, having won eight in a row. Lafayette comes in at 2-8. and eight. So, Mike, with all the problems we have had, and we basically are struggling in almost every facet of the football game, how in the world do we uh, go about upsetting uh, the Lehigh Mountain Hawks? Well, I think Lafayette has one advantage, and that's the fact that they can kind of let it all hang out. They don't really have anything uh, uh, to hold back right now. So I'm looking for Lafayette to run a lot of different formations, run a couple trick plays mm -hmm. here or there, throw the ball downfield two or three times a half, and then defensively just cut it loose and try to make Shafnisky make mistakes. And I think if you can make him do that from the pocket, I don't want him outside the pocket. I don't want him out making plays with his legs and extending plays. But I think defensively, if you can get him out of the pocket maybe and make him make a bad throw here or there and have Lafayette do some things offensively they haven't shown, they may have an advantage. Offensively, this team, Lehigh, looks a little bit kind of like uh, Colgate did last week in that they have a very talented quarterback who can run with the football, but they also throw it downfield, and Don Braglione is as good a running back, I think, as they'll see. Lehigh may very well be, if you take Army out of the picture, the best team we've faced all year. Yeah, they're the probably the most explosive team and the most consistent offensively. They've really scored a lot of points. So I go back to what we talked about last week at Colgate, phase football. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stop phase one. Phase one has to be stopping Bragg alone. You have to stop him and make them a little bit more one-dimensional. If you don't do that, um, you're going to be in for a long day. And you saw that last week uh, with Melville and some of the running backs they had. You cannot allow them to dictate offense. You need to dictate with your defense and take some things away. Okay, that's a look at the strategy going into the ball game on Saturday. Let's take a look at the emotion. What do you tell the kids in the locker room? I mean, they can see that this is a championship football team they're going up against. What do you tell them to prepare them to go out and, and maybe come up with the biggest upset in the league this season? Well, uh, I, I've been thinking about this a lot. I think what you have to understand, and, and I think freshmen learn it a little bit later, obviously, than the upperclassmen, but this game's bigger than yourself. It's about your family, it's about your friends, it's about your coaches, it's about your professors, it's about bragging rights. So the quicker people can understand that, and I think uh, what happens in this game is you go through highs and lows. Team scores 10 points, another team scores 14. So it goes in waves. It's like a roller coaster. Which team can I think withstand that, can withstand that. And Lafayette has a little bit of advantage because they are at home. But um, like you said, this is, you have to let those guys know that there's nothing left to hold back mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. You got to let it all hang out. And I think Lafayette can do that. They've had a lot of freshmen play this year and a lot of kids that may not understand this rivalry and may not understand it till the time they step on the field and they can hear it and taste it and smell it. So. Um, it's going to be an interesting conversation, but I'm sure Coach Devani will have a fired up speech. And there may just be a couple of intangibles going into this ball game. Lehigh had an off week. I'm not sure that helped them. They were on a roll, really moving the ball offensively and playing great defense. And, and the other thing is, may they in any possible way be looking ahead to next week? Um, I would think they would probably be looking ahead a little bit, although it's tough to do that when, you have, when it's Lafayette Lehigh. The one little blip I think I see in their schedule is the fact that they were down 13-7 two weeks ago to Bucknell. Uh, had to come back and win that ball mm -hmm. game, and they're, you know, Bucknell has always been a good rivalry for them, but Bucknell had them on the ropes. So you wonder if there's a little bit of a blip in their offense and uh, maybe that week off takes a little bit of fire, makes a little bit of starch. You know, we always see it in, in the baseball games. The team has the longer time off, comes back a little flat. I think Lafayette has to jump on them early. Well, if you cannot get to the stadium, then certainly tune in on the Lafayette Sports Network. We'll be on the air all over the world, actually, on the Lafayette Sports Network starting at 1230. Mike will be there. I'll be there. John Leon will be there. And we all want to thank you for spending some time with us behind uh, inside the huddle with Mike and, of course, behind the mic with us each week. So thanks for a great season. We'll see you during football season next year. Basketball starting tonight. So we'll be back. Thanks for watching.